Hi, everybody, and welcome back to Debate Winter School Day 4. Uh, congratulations for making it this far, <laughs> because it's not at all easy. Uh, what we've been learning so far is really challenging stuff. Uh, and we've given you, as I've said before, we've given you so much information in a very small amount of time. So having said that, um, <clears throat> if you feel overwhelmed, don't panic. If you feel overwhelmed, then it's completely normal. Uh, many of us have different learning styles, and I know for myself, I had to uh, go over this stuff quite a few times before it actually like clicked in and sunk in. So with that in mind, um, during the breakout session today, if there is anyone that is just like, I need a review, I don't know what's going on, I'm out of my depth, if there's anyone that feels worried like that, um, please join me for the breakout session in the large gray circle at the back on the, um, I guess it would be on the stage left. Uh, and then we can go through slowly some of the responses again. Uh, I think if you get the responses down, then later on we can work on doing some other things. So that's one thing. Uh, another thing is there is some doubt about uh, the rule that I mentioned yesterday about is, is, and has, has. So keep that in mind. Uh, it may be a difference of tradition because I come from a difference of tradition and it also may be that I am just mistaken, which actually is also very much in the realm of possibility. <laughs> um, so we're going to, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm going to look more into that and let you know, but in the meantime, uh, you know, you can check it out yourself actually, uh, because I feel like a lot of this uh, stuff in debate is about finding out how things go wrong yourself and, you know, working out where the, where the sort of, you know, weak points are in the reasoning. So a lot of this is about practice and about, you know, finding out for yourselves the, um, the issues. So having said that, um, before we jump into it today, we're going to be looking at uh, the four joints. Um, but before we do, are there any burning questions? No, that's lovely. Okay. So um, there was one other um, uh, slight um, uh, error, I guess, error that came up in the reasoning that um, was noticed um, um, in the practice sessions. So we'll look at that as well after. We'll look at some of the, the particular issues and, you know, <laughs> how to, how to uh, fix those. But for the moment, let's get started with the joints of reasoning. <laughs> the joints of reasoning. Okay. So, hi. So can you guys see my screen? And maybe Tenzin, could you come up on stage and tell me if you see my screen? Hi. Hello, I can Hi. see you. Great, yeah. excellent, lovely. Okay, so the joints of reasoning. So we've talked a little bit about pervasion and the joints of reasoning is one way of talking about how things pervade each other or more correctly, how the characteristics of things pervade other things. <laughs> it sounds a little bit complicated, but it's actually kind of straightforward, at least, you know, at, at first glance. And then obviously, like all of this stuff, the deeper you go into it, the, the harder it gets. So one way to examine pervasion is to look at some of the different ways that objects can be related to one another. We have called this here, the count, uh, counting the joints of reasoning. And these are simply four possible ways that two objects can be related to each other in terms of how they pervade each other. Uh, and so we have this uh, gentleman monk down here considering something with a lot of uh, effort. And I don't know if he is thinking about the four joints of reasoning, but let's say he is for the sake of this 
uh, lecture. So the first one is equivalence. And I recognise also that a lot of this is probably familiar to people that have studied this before. Um, sometimes this is called mutual inclusion um, and there might be some other names as well. But we're here we're calling it equivalence. <coughs> so what is equivalence? Equivalence is when everything that is A is B and everything that is B is A. Simple as that. For example, a cat and an animal that makes the sound meow are equivalent. They have equivalence because everything that is a cat is an animal that makes the sound meow and everything that is an animal that makes the sound meow is a cat. So I would like to ask you guys, do you think that that is correct? Do you agree that everything that is a cat is an animal that makes the sound meow and everything that makes the sound meow is a cat? Put your hand up if you agree. <laughs> okay, great. Right, at least one people says, says no and uh, some people have question marks. So I would like to maybe invite the person who said no. I think it was uh, Rahul. If you would, uh, can you think of an example of something which is one but not the other? I mean, humans can imitate a cat's noise. Oh, nice, nice. Yes, that's great. I didn't think of that. Um, so in debate, that would be uh, if he was a challenger and I was a defender and I committed myself to the fact that everything that makes a sound meow is a cat and everything that is a cat makes a sound meow, he could pull that example out and he could, you know, show me. <laughs> he could probably tell me on that. Um, great, excellent. But keeping in mind that equivalence, so maybe that's not a perfect example of equivalence, um, I would invite you guys to try and think of what might be a perfect, perfect example of equivalence. Often a definition and the definiendum, the thing that is defined, often they're considered to be equivalent. Anything that is synonymous should really be equivalent. If anything is one, it's the other. If the other, it's one. Okay, great. So aside from my uh, so uh, the definition of the definition uh, of equivalence is distinct phenomena that share the eight doors of pervasion. Distinct phenomena that share the eight doors of pervasion. So this means that A and B should really be, at least sort of nominally, they should be different things. So if it's like a cat and a cat, um, maybe, I mean, this we could, we could argue this, but maybe this would not be an example of equivalence. Uh, a distinct phenomena that share the eight doors of pervasion. So if you're already worried about this, do not worry about the next part that's coming. Uh, if you are already a little bit familiar with this, then you might be aware of what the eight doors of pervasion are. So these are the eight doors of pervasion. If something is A, it is necessarily B. If something is B, it is necessarily A. If something is not A, it is necessarily not B. If something is not B, it is necessarily not A, halfway there. If something has A, it necessarily has B. If something has B, it necessarily has A. If something doesn't have A, it necessarily doesn't have B. If something doesn't have B, it necessarily doesn't have A. So I would invite you guys to have a little think about that and to try and maybe come up with some things that you think uh, fits into this category of equivalence by meeting the eight doors of pervasion. So now uh, to give a little demonstration of what this might look like when we're doing this in debate, uh, Tenzin is going to join me. Are you on stage, Tenzin? Hello, yes. Hi. Okay, so my lovely assistant for today, Denzel, is going to help me. Um, and uh, 
I will be the challenger. Does that work for you? Yes. Great. I'll, okay. Uh, so, can you see the screen? Uh, yes. Excellent. Okay. So, <coughs> equivalence. It follows. You can posit the difference between a cat and an animal that makes the sound meow in terms of three joints, four joints, equivalence, or contradiction. I accept. Posited. Equivalence. Equivalence. Take the subject, a cat and an animal that makes the sound meow. They are equivalent because. Because they are a dis uh, distinct phenomena that share the eight doors of pervasion. Mm. And so, uh, would you like to continue and read on the eight doors of pervasion? Sometimes this is not necessary, but, uh, you know, we'll read through it anyway. Yes. Is that all right? I accept. Okay, okay. great. What are the eight doors of pervasion? First, if something is a cat, it is necessarily an animal that makes the sound meow. And uh, second, if something is an animal that makes the sound meow, it necessarily is a cat. Third, if something is not a cat, it is necessarily not an animal that makes the sound meow. Fourth, if something is not an animal that makes the sound meow, it necessarily is not a cat. If something has a cat, it necessarily has an animal that makes the sound meow. Sixth, if something has an animal that makes the sound meow, it necessarily has a cat. Seventh, if something doesn't have a cat, it necessarily doesn't have an animal that makes the sound meow. And eighth, if something doesn't have an animal that makes the sound meow, it necessarily doesn't have a cat. Great. Excellent. So, uh, do we have any questions about equivalence? Okay. Great. So, the next one is... The next one is number two, contradiction. So for contradiction, everything that is A is not B, and everything that is B is not A. For example, a dog and a cat. Everything that is a dog is not a cat. Everything that is a cat is not a dog. Uh, that's one example. Another example, which is slightly different kind of contradiction. Everything that is a dog is not a not dog, everything that is a not dog is not a dog. <laughs> so yeah, it's really confusing as you guys have worked out. It gets really confusing with all the knots. <coughs> but the definition of contradiction is distinct phenomena that have no common ground. So basically there is nothing that is both. Uh, in the first example, there is something that is neither. In the second example, example two, there is not, presumably, there is not anything that is neither. But in both cases, there is not something which is both. So let's have a look at what that might look like. Contradiction. Are you ready, Tenzin? Okay. It follows you can posit the difference between a cat and a dog that makes between a cat and a dog, sorry, that's a mistake, between a cat and a dog in terms of three joints, four joints, equivalent or contradiction. I accept. Positive. Contradiction. Take the subject, a dog and a cat. They are contradictory because? Because they are distinct phenomena which have no common ground. Mm. Uh, I.e. nothing which is both of them exists. Exist, yes. It follows that if something is a cat, it is necessarily not a dog. I accept. It follows that if something is a dog, it is necessarily not a cat. I accept. Great. So do we have any questions about contradiction?
Uh, Farina, do you want to come to the stage? Hi. Hello. Hi, welcome. Hi. Uh, as yesterday, thank you again. Um, I'm just wondering, um, I think in the first slide with equivalence, when we went through the eight doors of pervasion, it was said necessarily not that. And I think if my logic is maybe mistaken, I think in equivalence, it should be not necessarily this, right? Whereas in contradiction, it has to be, it necessarily is not that. Uh, so in, the, in the sheet before, it says like if it is in the in the eight doors of pervasion where we go to the uh, of not being, mm -hmm. I think it was written like if it is not a, it is necessarily or not, not B. B. And I think at least if I'm not mistaken, it should be not necessarily. <laughs> Okay, let's have a look. Yeah, let's let's walk through this. Whereas maybe maybe I'm just getting it wrong, but I think there's a difference. Sure, there is definitely a difference with that necessarily difference. and necessarily not. Okay. Um, and I think that that will come out in the three joints and the four joints. We'll see the difference. But let's let's walk through. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Right. So. So the question was, uh, with the doors of pervasion. Um, there's these negative ones, yeah? If something is not A, it is necessarily not B. And the question is, do we mean if something is not A, it is necessarily not B, or do we mean if something is not A, it is not necessarily B? And in fact, I would say, uh, if, uh, if you can think of something that is A and not B, then this should be not necessarily B. But if you can't think of anything that is not A, which is B, then it should be necessarily not. I don't know if that helps any. Uh, that might have made things a bit more confusing. Um, so everything that is A, everything that is not A, what's, what's a not A in this circumstance? It could be, I don't know, it could be a dog, it could be an elephant, it could be a, an ant. And that is going to be all of those things that fall into that category of not A are going to be things that fall into the category of not B necessarily. Um, I don't know if that's clarified or not. Oh, I didn't have my screen share on. I apologize. I don't know if that's clarified or not. Have a little think about it. And then uh, if there's still issues with that, then uh, we can come back and talk through that again. Right. Okay. Uh, Neuron, did you want to say something? Hi. Hi. Uh, yes, I wanted to say something regarding uh, equivalence. What I have learned the word, it is synonymous, which can be anything like equivalence or synonymous, I suppose so. And uh, Instead of the word necessarily, where mm -hmm. we are having the debate, if I say whatever is A should be B and whatever is B should be A, mm. is that all right? Um, whatever is A should be B and is whatever is B should be A. Well, that's a good question. Does should do the same work as necessarily there? Um, Why do I we think have it probably does. Necessary. I think it probably does. Yeah. There might be some philosophers who, or ling uh, linguists who, you know, want to question that. But to I my know. mind, at least Can in I just say general that common sense. This is a funny thing because this is actually a difference in Indian English and, I, mean, I don't know, Australian English. But in America, the word should actually doesn't mean must. But in India, mm -hmm. I notice people use it that way. So I think in India, it will work. <laughs> okay. Outside of India, you would get some kind of funny looks. It should be what because in in um, in America should means like a something Normative. that's like ethically or morally important to do. <laughs> it doesn't mean an actual necessity. Oh. And the example for which I have is product and impermanent. Great. So, do you think product and impermanent are uh, equivalent? Synonymous. Yes. Synonymous. Okay. Great. That's another one for you guys to uh, to consider. Thank you. Yeah. Great. So uh, let's move on. 
to the next one. Okay. Equivalence, contradiction. So the next one is the three joints, the three joints. <coughs> and as you can see from the Venn diagram here, uh, there are three requirements. Everything that is B is necessarily A or is A or should be A, uh, however you want to phrase it, keeping in mind that there is that linguistic slipperiness when you use the word should because it invokes a normative connotation. Uh, not everything that is A is B, and there is something that is neither, out here in the white part, is neither A nor B. For example, cat and black cat. So everything that is a cat is necessarily a black cat. Not, oh sorry, <laughs> other way around. Everything that is a black cat is necessarily a cat. Not everything that is a cat is necessarily a black cat. And there is something which is neither a cat nor a black cat. So let's have a look at what this would look like in debate. Are you ready, Tenzin La? Yes. It follows you can posit the difference between cat and black cat. I accept. In terms of three joints, four joints, equivalence or contradiction. Except. Three joints. Positive, three joints. Which if, pervades which? If something is a black cat, it is necessarily a cat. If something is a cat, it is not necessarily a black cat. It follows that if something is a cat, it is not necessarily a black cat. I accept. It follows that if something is a black cat, it is necessarily a cat. I accept. Mm. Posit an example of something that is a cat and not a black cat. Take the subject a white cat. Uh, take the subject a white cat, it follows it is a cat. I accept. Take the subject a white cat, it follows it is not a black cat. I accept. Posit an example of something that is a cat and a black cat. Take the subject the black cat in the garden. Take the subject, the black cat in the garden, it follows it is a cat. I accept. Take the subject, the black cat in the garden, it follows it is a black cat. I accept. Posit an example of something that is neither a cat nor a black cat. Take the subject, a tree. Take the subject, a tree, it follows it is not a cat. I accept. Take the subject, a tree, it follows it is not a black cat. I accept. Excellent. So we might press on and do number four, and then I'll take questions after number four. So number four is the four joints, the four joints. <clears throat> so in this one, not everything that is A is B, and not everything that is B is A, and there is something that is both A and B, and there is something that is neither A nor B. For example, a cat and a female. And this is uh, depicted in the Venn diagram here, <clears throat> where not everything that is a cat is female, not everything that is female is a cat, there is something that is both female and a cat, and there is something that is neither female nor a cat. So let's have a look at what that would look like in debate. Are you ready? Yes. Okay. It follows you can posit the difference between a cat and female in terms of three joints, four joints, equivalent or contradiction. I accept. Positive. Four joints. It follows that if something is a cat, it is not necessarily a female. I accept. It follows that if something is a female, it is not necessarily a cat. I accept. Posit an example of something that is a cat and not a female. Take the subject a male kid. Cat. Take the subject a male cat, it follows it is a cat. I accept. Take the subject a male cat, it follows it is not a female. I accept. Posit an example of something that is a female but not a cat. Take the subject a female cat. Human. Human. <laughs> 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 yes, human. 
Take the subject of female human, it follows it is female. I accept. Take the subject of female human, it follows it is not a cat. I accept. Posit an example of something which is both a cat and a female. Take the subject a female cat. Take the subject a female cat, it follows it is a cat. I accept. Take the subject a female cat, it follows it is a female. I accept. Posit an example of something that is neither a cat nor a female. Take the subject an ink pot. Take the subject an ink, ink pot, it follows it is not a cat. I accept. Take the subject an ink pot, it follows it is not a female. I accept. Great. So, in summary, we have four types, we have four um, ways of counting the joints, both A and B is equivalence. If uh, a, um, everything that is A is not B and everything, is not, everything that is B is not A is contradiction. The three joints as, just, as depicted here and the four joints as depicted here. Right. So now we can maybe return to questions, doubts, comments. Okay. So let me look at the who's got their hand up. Okay. So maybe who haven't we, who hasn't asked a question before? Uh, what about uh, Shub? Bangi. And Joe, just there's one question that came Shubangi, up in the would chat. would you like to um, maybe after come to the stage and ask a question? There's also one. Uh-oh. Maybe Joe had a little computer snafu. So let's look at the question by Joe and by Shanti. Can everybody hear me? I don't know what happened to Joe. Okay. I can hear you, don't you? Yeah, okay. Let's take the question from Shanti. It says, for the eight doors, are all the pervasions necessarily needed to be checked? Uh, I.e., is there some redundancy in the criteria? So it's interesting, right? It, you wonder, well, what could be a case where it, you know, the first two or, th you know, three or four doors check out, but not the last few doors. So um, there may be rare cases where, you know, the doors, we call them, we distinguish them between, we say the doors of pervasion of being and the doors of pervasion of having, right? So those are different. You know, if something is a cat, it's necessarily an animal that, it is necessarily an animal that makes the sound meow versus if something has a cat, it necessarily has an animal that makes the sound meow. Oh, well, I'm sorry, my camera's not working. Okay. I didn't even notice. So um, so there are cases where that might not be the same, where it, it would be a pervasion of the being. Something is a cat is necessarily the animal that makes the sound meow, but not necessarily where it, it, if something has that is necessarily... Um, you know, has a, um, and so what's, what's examples like this would be, or, or vice versa actually is even better. And that's cases of like cause and effect, right? If something has, um, smoke, it necessarily has fire, but if something is smoke, it isn't the case that it necessarily is fire. So, you know, th those are important. Um, at the same time, you don't need to actually check them. You just state them when you're like, you know, when they say, okay, what are the eight doors of pervasion between these two things? Let's just say we're doing, you know, color and that which is suitably described as a hue. Then you just say, if it is color, it's necessarily something described, reasonably described as a hue. If it's something reasonably described as a hue, it's necessarily color. But you don't actually like check them beyond that. You just state them. That's the, that's the format just to make clear why they have the equivalence. Sorry, Joe, you, you got a little side. Apologize, oh. technical issues. Oh, Venerable Numjong, mm -hmm. did you also have a comment? I'm sorry, it some, seemed like you were saying, wanting to come mm -hmm. on stage. Mm, if you did, please um, say it. Oh. Sorry. I was, uh, yeah, hi. I was actually going to say, it would be a nice um, kind of homework assignment for people to think about 
whether, for example, if something is A and then it's necessarily B, and then if it's B, it's necessarily A, then if the the yukyapnyam, or in other words, if something has A, then would it necessarily have B? And if something uh, has B, would it necessarily have A? Do you understand? So if the first, let's say, first uh, two doors of pervasion hold, uh, is it necessarily the case that all eight pervasions hold? And just think about cases like that. You know, That's a great idea. That's the challenge to you guys that's just yeah. being put forward, to find an example of something which is perhaps the first two, but doesn't uh, fit with all of the eight doors. Yeah. And then, you know, you can do all the permutations. Can you find something that's that's only four and then only six, you know, stuff like this. Okay. A that's great it. challenge. <laughs> Excellent. Um, so then we might, uh, we might break out. Um, and keep in mind that if you are, um, there are some drills. So I think the drills are pretty straightforward. Um, so I will let you guys have a look at those yourself. Now you're kind of familiar with how the drills work. I think there's still um, a few yeah. questions, actually. We didn't have time to, yeah. you were gone just for, we just answered one question in that time. <laughs> oh, okay. Sorry. All right. So shall we do more questions then? Okay. Somebody, uh, whoever would like to, please come up to the stage. And if anyone has a question, please come up to the stage. Oh, and also, I just want to say for Shanti, um, she asks, for the, eight door, um, for the eight doors, are all the pervasions necessary? Well, that's the one we answered. Necessarily answer. needed to be checked. Oh, great. Excellent. Yeah. Okay. But, I, mean, yeah. I mean, usually in debate, if somebody um, says that there are eight doors and you, as a challenger, accept it, you don't have to make them go through all of the eight doors, but you can if you have some doubt or if you, you know, want to <laughs> make them. Okay, so we've got, um, oh, okay, yep. And then I think Samuel has a question after that. Hi. Um, is that working? Hi. Uh, okay, who's on here? Yeah, I'm confused. Okay. Can you hear me? Uh, yeah, we can hear you. Okay, great. So uh, there was a couple of things. I mean, uh, first of all, the there's some. I found there are some things. For example, in the contradiction uh, that you put forward between the dog and the cat, and C, uh, take the subject a dog and a cat. They're contradictory, contradictory because they are distinct phenomena which have no common ground, and that was accepted. But they are both animals. For example, that's a common ground. I, mean, I know mm -hmm. it's. So uh, what happens then? If, if you're in this debate? Um, that is a really up. good question. Um, so I'm, I think I'm going to throw this one over to one of the Lupa scholars because my answer, I think, would actually be different to Donio's answer. So I would like to... <laughs> okay. And there was also in the, the other thing about the cat, uh, I mean, but this is just technical, but there are cats which are, for example, tigers. They don't make the sound meow. Mm-hmm. Right, great. So that would be another another uh, excellent example of uh, of yeah of a flaw in, in my position. Yes. <laughs> um, great. But so, what do we do when this when you come to this contradiction and, and there are distinct phenomena? Which then what what happens there in the, right? In so the basically, if I have posited. Uh, like if, so if you are let's just clarify them, though, you what, maybe we can just clarify what it means to have a common ground, right? Okay. So what is it what does it say in the note after it is there does there does not exist something which is both of them. Right? There does not exist something which is both a cat and a dog. So you would say if you posited, well yes there does, take the subject an animal. So you say, take this, you just check it. Take this object an animal. It follows it as a cat. Okay. You accept. All right. <laughs> and Thank take you. this object an animal. It follows it's also a dog. I'm 
you want me to respond to that? Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> okay. It's, uh, it's an animal, I accept. No, no, uh, no. The, the subject is animal. We're asking, is, yeah. the, is animal a dog? Uh, yes, uh, a dog animal is, is a, a dog. the animal is a dog, <laughs> but it's not pervasive. It's not all animals are dogs. So right. So, so that's that? the thing. So we just check it, and you know, if you have a reason to prove that animal animal is a dog, you know, then you can hold that position. If you have a re then you would end up saying animal is a dog. It's a cat. It's an elephant. Animal is a giraffe. Animal is a zebra. Animal is a horse. You know, animal is is you know a hundred different animals. So then you have. You know, okay, so take the subject animal. It follows it has a trunk and it has, you know, six legs and it has eight legs and it has four legs and it has two legs. <laughs> you know, it's, it's a, it gets a little difficult to hold that position after a while, probably. Yeah. Okay, so you just accept that there's no common ground based on that? Based on okay. the logic of it, right. That if you, you know, a dog is an animal that has, you know, or at least, you know, in general, a healthy dog has four legs. You know, uh, a spider has eight. So take the subject and animal follows it has only four legs, but also has only eight legs. <laughs> you know, it's like you would have to just use that that logic to show how um, it wouldn't make sense for something to be both a dog and a spider, right? Okay, I've just got thrown by the no common ground, and I just thought whatsoever. So okay. No, well, that's a, but the good. It's a good point because one way of thinking would be that. We're, we're talking about, is there something that a dog and a cat both are, which an animal is that, right? A dog and a cat both are an animal or animals, but does there exist something which is both a cat and a dog? So it's coming from the, you know, you're not looking at the wider category and saying, well, is there a wider category under which cat and dog both fall? Right. Okay, You're so saying, that term means that they are identical. In that, no, it just means is there something? With, so let's take an example of something where there is a common ground, like mm -hmm. um, an animal and a mammal. So there exists something which is both an okay. animal and a mammal. Take the subject, the mm -hmm. cat. It follows it's an animal. Okay. Take the subject, the cat. It follows it's a mammal. So. A cat is both an animal and a mammal, therefore animal and a mammal have a common ground. There, ex there does exist something that's both of them. Yes. It, it's tricky, so I'm thinking it's, in terms I'm thinking in terms of these two circles which touch over, but, but here we're talking about two separate okay. All it's right, it's it. something that we have to work through. It really yeah, we have to that's what the the practice will help us get clear about it. It does take a while to get clear about what what it's saying. And it really, okay. I mean, it really is an excellent question. It's not it's not at all a stupid question. It actually, this is this is something that, um, you know, we, even within the traditions, is you know is debated. Yeah. So. Okay. Excellent question. Excellent question. Um, I think Samuel, you're. Uh, yes, uh, hello. Uh, I just wanted to double check. Uh, in the eight doors of provision, we include also the heads. Now, in the three joints, do we ask everything that is B is A, not everything that is A is B, but we do not check for everything that has B is A, but not everything as A has B. Is that correct? Yeah. Um. Well, I would invite you to tell me if you think that that would make a difference. And this comes back to, you know, Venerable Namjong's question as to whether, you know, the first doors of pervasion will actually necessarily lead to there having to be the other doors of pervasion. So um, maybe if you could like, uh, you know, come back with, you have a think and come back with an example where that would actually make a difference. That would be great. There may yep. very well be, yeah? There may very well be. Yeah. Okay. And then that would be a wonderful thing to, to debate in the tradition. You could lock, you know, if you were challenging, if you were challenging me, you could lock me into, um, into that position, and then you could mm -hmm. come and sideswipe me. <laughs> Great. Okay. Good question. Okay. So um, let's uh, have a break out. If you have any other questions, please put them in the chat or. Uh, 
uh, come and see us. But if anybody uh, wants to get back to basics, please join me uh, on the uh, – I don't know if I'm pointing in the right direction. I don't know if everything's back to front. But the door where Donio is standing close to, if you go out that door, there should be a big – circle there and so if anybody wants to kind of go through it again please join me there otherwise uh enjoy do the drills if you want to do the drills do the debates if you're ready to do the debates and have fun Okay. So um, I'll start then. Mm -hmm. So um, take uh, the subject. Uh, it, it follows that you can posit the difference between dog and animal in terms of three joints, four joints, equivalence or contradiction. I accept. Um, so, uh, posited. Mm -hmm. Dog and animal. Uh. <laughs> okay, I choose. Uh. What should I choose? Equivalence? No. 
So try to think like, um, are all dogs animals and are all animals dogs? Uh, all animals. Uh, all dogs are animals. So are all dogs are animals, right? But are all animals dogs? No. No. Um, so if you look at the template, you know, the circles, how you can see those um, A and B and then the circles. Contradiction. Yeah. Uh, if it's contradiction, then it would mean that there's no dog that is an animal. Mm -hmm. Maybe I will be the challenger. <laughs> so, okay, yeah, yeah. Maybe you can do the challenger then. Um, okay. It follows you can pause the difference between dog and animal in terms of three joints, four joints, equivalence, or contradiction. I accept. Was it them? Uh, three joints. Mm -hmm. um, which pervades which? So if something is a dog, it is necessarily an animal. If something is an animal, it is not necessarily a dog. I accept. <clears throat> so um, then you can uh, confirm. Uh, it follows if something is uh, a dog, it is necessarily an animal. Exactly. It follows uh, <clears throat> and reverse, yes? In, in, it follows yeah. if something is animal, it is not necessarily a dog. I accept. Okay. Good. Uh, What next? <laughs> so then you can ask like an example, something that, that is of, that is an animal but is not a dog. Mm -hmm. Please pause an ex example of something that is animal but uh, not a dog. Um, a mouse. Mm -hmm. Take the subject a mouse. It follows. It's. Uh, not a dog. <laughs> I accept. Take the subject a mouse, it follows its animal. I accept. Okay. So um, then the next one you ask something that's both. Mm -hmm. Was it an example of something that is, uh, or I should uh, do it? Yeah, you ask, ask something, yes. Was it an example of something uh, that is that a dog. Neither, oh no, as it is. Uh, dog and animal. Dog and animal. Yeah, both, right? So we need something that's right. Um, so uh, if we talk about three joints, uh, we have neither an animal or nor a dog. No? So that's the next one. So first okay. we do this one, and then the next one will be the. So this is the second joint. Um, so something that is both a dog and an animal is um, uh, my dog at home. Uh, okay, uh, let's okay. Uh, let's say my dog Snowy. Uh huh. I accept. Yep. Um, so then you can say yeah. Follow the steps. So the next step is. Take the subject, my dog Snowy. It take follows it is a take a subject, your dog, my dog Snowy, it follows it's an animal. I accept. Take the subject, uh, my dog Snowy, it follows it's uh, a dog. I accept. Then yeah, now you know the third step, right? The third <laughs> one. Which is was it an ex example of something that is neither a dog and nor an animal? Yeah. Um, so neither a dog nor an animal. Um, let's see. A um, table. I accept. Yeah. Uh, take so the subject to the table. Step. It follows. It's not an animal. I accept. Take the subject uh, a table. It follows. It's not a dog. I accept. Great. We did it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, 
Would you like to try the next one? Yeah. Oh, do you want to do the challenger or defender? Which one would you? Uh, Robin, did you want to also participate? Is, do you know if... Uh, Hello? You check with Robin. Hello? Oh, yeah, Robin. Hello. Listen, I'm going to the slides. Uh, thank you. Okay. <laughs> We're doing drill uh, day 4.1, drill 1. Is it drawing? Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I missed the, the presentation in the Gumpa, so I'm going through the... Oh, the <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, we're, there's kind of... Um, we went through the four kind of possibilities, the four joints. So it's like uh, subsets, but if you have a look in the template, it kind of shows how they do it. So... Um, Victoria, okay, I'll ask you another one. Yeah. Um, Robin, let us know um, when you kind of have had a look and you're ready to join. Sure, but give me a second, I'm uh, reading up. Yeah, I'm still okay. uh, clear. Three joints, four joints, equivalence or contradiction. Okay. Um, I... Ex wait, I accept? It says you're supposed to reply posit them. No, I accept first and you reply posit them. You give oh, me, you're, right. you're giving me. Oh, okay. The, I see. Okay. You accept? Okay. Posit them. Um, it is. Uh, Okay, so drug and animal, it is not equivalence. Um, dog and animal, it is not contradiction. It is three joints. What is that? Oh, is that, a, no. is that right, Daniel? Do you, well, how would you check it? I mean, is it? Is it right? I don't quite well, understand this yet. That's you have to right. you have to look at this stuff it. though. You're, it's yeah. I find it would they for need me it would chart. be impossible to do this exercise without having the charts open in front. Of right. Um, I don't so, have memorized all the things, you know. So the only way to do it would be to I have the charts. I downloaded open the charts like you did, but I didn't, so I can't open them and open the drill at the same time. So you just say, okay, so if there's three joints, which pervades which? That's not, I mean, so, so basically every, everything that is a dog is an animal. If something is a dog, it's necessarily an animal. If something. Uh, I'm just following the language on this well, sheet. Okay. Oh, you mean. I'm not everything. Not every, I'm looking at the sheet and following the language exactly. Everything that is a dog is an animal, but. Not everything that is an animal is a dog. Yeah. Uh, and there is something that is neither an animal nor a dog. Yeah. So I would posit it has three joints. Okay. Okay, so a joint is one of those. I don't understand what a joint is. A joint is one yeah, of those four concepts. What, those four concepts and if they're linked together or not. They're called joints because they link the thoughts together, thoughts together or concepts together. Something that is something that is Sorry. has three joints has how many of the shares how many of the eight doors of provision, don't you? Well none of them. Oh no, I see what oh, you're saying. It's okay. It goes yeah. one, only one. No, it goes. There's one, I guess. Right. If something is an animal, it's necessary. It's, if something is a dog, it's necessarily an animal. So that's one. <laughs> right. Oh, I see. So as long as one pervasion going only one way and only for is. Yeah. Well, no, I guess actually you would I, have to say if something is not an animal, it's necessarily not a dog. So there's two. Yeah. So there's, there's two. two. So yeah. why do you. What do the joints refer to? What is a joint? 
Um, joints just refer to, I mean, it's just the, the ways of the things being connected. You know, it's, it's a possible relation between two things. So something, you know, there, there's something which is both an animal and a dog, right? There's something which is neither an animal nor a dog. And there's something, there's something which is, which is, um, an animal, but not a dog. So, so it's, it's not related to the housing system of the eight doors of provision. Well, like you just said, it, I mean, that you can think of it in terms of, you know, does it fulfill any of the eight doors of provision? That's a valid question that you, you just answered. So, yeah, that was a good question. But the eight doors of provision are specifically for things that are equivalent, right? That it has all those eight. But, right, I mean, it's all about pervasion. If it is... Then a isn't necessarily B or not, right? So here, you're right. If something has three joints, then there are two of the doors of pervasion. But just try to go through a lot of examples. It'll get clearer. That's the thing. You know, yeah. it's, it's one of those things you have to practice to get clear about. Yeah. We also have to know what three joints, four joints, equivalents, and contradiction mean. Yeah. yeah. Know what they yeah. are. Right. Know what they are. Right. So three joints is exactly as you said, right? There is something that okay. is both, something that is animal but not dog, something that is neither. Exactly. Okay, do the next one, Ron. Okay. So it follows it follows you can posit the difference between dog and cat in terms of three joints, four joints, equivalence or contradiction. So it's not equivalence. So you're it supposed to say, I accept, right? Oh, I accept. Sorry. Yes. Oh, okay. And then the challenger will say, posit them. Now you do it. Uh, so dog. It follows you. You can posit the difference between dog and cat in terms of... There's nothing that is both a dog and a cat. So that would be not equivalent, right? Everything that is A is not B. Everything that is a contradiction. Right, that's the example of contradiction. Oh, okay. Okay. So. You know, the next one. Oh, that's all you're supposed to do? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so uh, it follows that. Um, it follows you can posit the difference between a bird and an animal with feathers in terms of the three joints, four joints, equivalence, or contradiction. Okay, so. Do you accept? Not, uh, uh, yeah, I accept. Okay, and then say, and I'm saying, we might as well follow the whole format. It makes the whole. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Posit them. So. Everything that is a bird is not an animal with a feather. That is not true. Uh, everything that is a bird is an animal with feather. Wait, do all birds have one. Do you know? I honestly I don't know enough about feathers? birds. <laughs> huh? I don't know enough about birds. Do you have an example of a bird that is does not have feathers? No, but there's animals with feathers that are not birds. Are there? Well, dinosaurs. Dinosaurs, that's cool. There are dinosaurs that have feathers that aren't birds yet. That's, what, uh, that's very uh, intelligent thinking. <laughs> it's just but it's, also, but it's also interestingly, I mean, it's also like in a phenomenological sense, the difference between that and a bird. This is basically what you call phenomenology, right, Lotan? What these are determining is about how phenomena uh, function. That's not what There's phenomenology the means, but oh, it's um, not phenomen. No, but anyway, what? But so this is like I'm this is ontology. Yeah, I mean, this is we're looking at relations uh -huh. between phenomena. So that's a kind of exa examining ontologies. Yeah, and taxonomy, right? Taxonomy is sort of how categories overlap and and are um, how things are defined in different categories or, or put into different categories. Yeah. But um, it's really about, again, it goes back to just the relations between things, right? How, how are things connected or related? 
But you can't go to relations between things without going through the historical mediations of the way those things have been categorized. For example, that example about dinosaurs and birds, that that is a particularly... It's not necessarily particularly true form, either. Not necessarily true. Because it's a it's form true. of categorization that has developed yeah. based on shifting archaeological and biological evidence. Yeah, and so that's cool to find to figure to try and look at you know how categories are formed, um, and I mean that's a deep you know that goes into a deep level. Well, of I guess based on well, I guess based on that, I would I would argue that a bird, not every animal with feathers is a bird, and not every bird is an animal with feathers. Um, yep. So that would be certainly not contradiction. So let's say that everything is a bird is an animal with wait everything is that is a bird is an animal with feathers not sure about that so it's not three joints not everything that is a bird is an animal with feathers not everything that is an animal with feathers is a bird there is something that is both a bird and an animal with feathers and there is something that is neither so I would say so, uh, this is four joints now, now try and posit examples of each of them you you know don't go through the whole language now just but just I'm curious to see what you could say. What do you mean? Like, we were using an example. Each of those four joints posit a subject. So one that's both, one oh. that's bird, but not okay. feathers, feathers, with, but not So take the subjects, um, a, a prehistoric um, winged animal that has not been sufficiently um, taxonomized or... <laughs> Um, analyzed and not enough about its outward features are known other than its skeleton and is indeterminate within the field of biology whether it can be uh, classified as a bird or a dinosaur it follows that it is an animal um, it follows that it is say it has and it has feathers it had feathers in real life it, when it was alive it had feathers just as for example right, right. it follows it is not a bird because it is classified currently as a dinosaur. I it might see. be reclassified if it were fa if, if, if something shifted in the evidence. And I, or in the Well, let's evidence. look at, I mean, the reality, right? You could just, I mean, say they're, just, just say, just assert it, right? You don't have to say like, if, 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 just assert it. You know, the animal that has feathers, but does not sufficiently meet the qualifications for classification as a bird, right? Why not? Just, just mm -hmm. say that that exists. Okay. If, if the de if the defender wants to challenge you and say that doesn't exist, then they will do that. But <laughs> you're, you have right. the right to assert it. <laughs> okay. Well, I am the defender. Why? Well, you're. I mean, the challenger. Yeah, you're right. If the challenger wants to uh -huh. wants to say that, oh no, that doesn't exist, they'll they'll challenge you. But so, um, take the subject. And then a bird, um, right? A bird which is not uh, an animal. Take the subject. Um, not everything that. Be. Take the subject of featherless bird. It, uh, <laughs> it follows that it is an animal. With, it follows that a, it is a, not an animal. A duck bird. that has just been, what's the word? Plucked. They, plucked. Huh. Yeah, a duck that has just yeah, been plucked. Sure. Or a baby a bird that doesn't. I mean, some baby birds I think they actually have more feathers, but oh, some, right. little they're not chicks, born. little like chicken they, they babies don't have feathers. Just or little fleshy That's things. actually a good point. Baby birds don't have feathers. A lot of them. Yeah. Okay. Right. Um. Uh, okay, so that's the second one. Then take the uh, take the subject, a adult hen. It follows that it is uh, both a bird and an animal with feathers. And take the subject, a uh, mug. It follows that it is neither. Good, great. That's exactly so. That's exactly what this these joints are about. You go and try to see. Can you find something that is? all four or only three or are they just contradictory there's nothing that's both at all or are they equivalent you can just go through the list here do you want to do the next you want to DV continue for the challenger now why don't you continue because i do need to print out uh -huh. before this and like the sec the two the one o'clock practice in in the united states oh, yeah, you need to yeah, print yeah. out the um or put on a separate you know, print out the um, that sheet that has what the four things are because I can't quite yeah. remember them. You know, this is too hard to do it with just in my head. So why don't we just take the subject, 
a big animal. What follows, you can posit the difference between a big animal and a mammal. Uh, in terms of the forms of the three joints, four joints, equivalence or contradiction. Do you accept? Uh, I accept, I accept. Posit them. Um, okay, it's not equivalence. Everything that is, is everything that is a mammal, a big animal is not a mammal, it's not a contradiction. Everything that is a mammal is a big animal. Wait, no. But everything that isn't Okay, not three joints. Not everything that is a big mammal, big animal is a mammal. Not every it's not a pet. Okay. Um, was it an example of something which is both a feline and a cat, or a pet? Yeah, um, a cat. No, no, a feline and a pet. Ah, a cat. Yeah, a, a cat. Yeah. <laughs> I accept. Um, he posted an example of something which neither pet and nor um, a, um, a fish. Really? Oh, no, no, actually, a fish could be a pet. <laughs> I can't <Yeah>. think. <laughs> I have to say something else. Um, uh, a whale. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, that's done. Do you want to ask another one as well? Yeah. Um, Robin, do you want to join us? Yes, yeah, sure. Okay. Number? Uh, number uh, six. We're up to number six. Mm. Who's doing what? I want to you listen. Can do, yeah, you, you can do the challenge. Yeah, you can do the challenge if I'll you challenge. want, Robin. Okay, it follows, you can pause the difference between red apple and red thing in the form of three joints, four joints, equivalence or contradiction. I accept. Okay. Uh, pause it then. Um, it's, I think it's three joints. Three joints. Okay. So which pervades which? If... Uh, if something is a red apple, it is necessarily a red thing. Uh, but if something is a red thing, it is not necessarily a red apple. I accept. Yeah. And then you have to ask. An example? Uh, yeah. Okay. Was uh, uh, uh. it an example of something that is a red apple, but not a red thing. Uh, uh, that's not. There's nothing like that. All red apples. Mm, are something red. that is a red thing, but not a red apple. Oh, yeah. Um, a red bag. A red bag. Okay. Uh, okay. As far as you can posit the difference between green apple and red thing. In the form of three um, joints, we haven't joints. we haven't finished it, so you have to ask. I think um, something that's both, and then something that's neither. Okay. Red apple. If both and neither, it's about four joints. Uh, if we go, uh, to students, it no. Well, if you look at um, so something that's red thing and not red apple would be. Uh, a red bag and then something that's both would could be something like in Australia we have like Fuji apples which mm -hmm. are like these red apples right so Fuji red Fuji apples are both a red apple and a red thing and then something that's neither red apple nor red thing um, could be anything like yeah, yeah. I mean uh, at the beginning you are chose for uh, three joints as I yeah, remember three joints but yeah. now and this no, 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 no. This is part of three joints. The yeah. first joint is um, 
What was the first train? Every single well, day. Well, it was the first one of the three joints is something that's um, both, and then one of them is something that's um, like B but not A. Um, mm -hmm. Then the third one is something that's neither. Okay. <laughs> so confirming the provisions, right? Red apple, red thing. It follows that if something is a red thing, is not necessarily a red apple. I accept. It follows that if something is a red apple, it is necessarily a red thing. I accept. Also, an example of something that is uh, that that we did. So yep. take the subject um, a red thing. It. I said red, a red apple. Uh, it follows it is red I, apple. I said, I, I, I said of, this example of red bag, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Take the subject of um, um, a white thing, it follows that it is not a red thing, a red apple. Or let's say a, red, a green apple, it follows that it is not a red apple, a red thing. So I think the defender has to come up with the examples. So you can say posit an example of something. Mm. So posit an example of something that is um, a red thing and a red apple. Yeah, so a red um, Fuji apple. So take the subject. A red, a red... Gala, red gala apple. Do you have red gala apples where you live? <laughs> we have. No. <laughs> so take the subject, a red gala apple, it follows it is a red thing. I accept. Take the subject, a red gala apple, it follows it is a red apple. I accept. Was it an example of something that is neither a red thing, neither a red apple? Um, a yellow banana. Take the subject yellow banana, it follows it is not a red apple. I accept. Take the subject yellow banana, it follows it is not a red thing. I accept. Yes. It's done. Very extensive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's quite, quite long, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. But you know. It's obvious now what it is and what it's not. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I, I'll ask the next one. Maybe we should try more difficult things than apples. Um, okay. Let me just pick one out of all of these then. Um, being a thing with mind, that can be interesting. If, if you guys look at the third sheet there, um, meaning yeah. they 4.1 drill three. It says yeah. tricky, tricky joints, and that oh, might be more okay. what, what Robin is thinking about. Yeah, there's a whole mm. list, okay. a whole list of things that are actually oh. quite more philosophically okay. interesting. Oh. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's try these ones then. Um, no, I think consciousness. This starts off tasty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's do. Uh, oh, these are quite good. You you want to defend? Um. Yeah, mind and consciousness is quite tricky one. <laughs> Do any other ones apart from that one? <laughs> uh, Fred and my pets and humans can also be interesting. Yeah, you could do that one. Yeah. Okay. Take the subject uh, featherless bipeds. And mm. humans, uh, how many joints are there? Oh, is there a biped that's not human? Oh yeah, there is like penguins, right? Um, so Chicken. I would say uh, that's three, um, three uh, joints. Three joints. Okay. So. Oh, do penguins have feathers? Uh, no, I don't think so. Are you maybe sure? Let me just have a look. Maybe on the boat. <laughs> I'm just going to yeah, check. Fins, but not feathers. It's more fish than a bird, no? Yeah, they do have feathers. They oh, have really? feathers just like all other birds. Okay. No, then. Um, is there anything else that's biped without feathers? Kangaroo? Can you think of it? Huh? What is kangaroo? Oh. oh, kangaroo. Yeah, that's a good one. You should okay, know yeah, that, Lexo. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, three joints. 
Okay. So, three joints. So, which pervades which? Um, if something is a human, it is necessarily... Oh, but no, I think four joints. Because what about if it's a little child? Like, they're not necessarily going to be biped. They could walk on, like, crawl. Yeah, but they're still under the phenomenon of bipeds, you know? They're like still, if, they have the potential to become a biped, right? Like, if a adult human crawls, you don't call them a biped, you know? Yeah, that's true. Okay, okay, yeah, I'm going to stick with three joints. Um, so if something is a human, it is necessarily a featherless biped. If something is a featherless biped, it is not necessarily a human. Mm. So it follows that if something is a featherless biped, it is not necessarily a human. I accept. It follows that if something is a human, it is necessarily a featherless biped. I accept. Was it an example of something that is uh, a featherless biped and not a human? A kangaroo. Mm. Take the subject, a kangaroo. Take the subject, a kangaroo. It follows it is a featherless biped. I accept. Take the subject, a kangaroo. It follows it is not a human. I accept. Was it an example of something that is um, a human and a featherless biped? Uh, Victoria, take the subject, Victoria. What? You have two legs, Victoria? Sorry? You have two legs, Victoria? <laughs> yeah, do you have two legs? <laughs> Just Maybe she's a monoped, you know, you're not sure. Huh? <laughs> do you look so? You have two legs? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> the last time I checked. <laughs> yeah, let's take you. Okay. Yeah. So take the subject Lexum. It follows it is a human. I accept. Take the subject Lexum. It follows uh, it. Sorry. Huh? She is a <laughs> featherless biped. I accept. A positive example of something that is neither a featherless biped, neither a human. Mm. Uh, I would say, let's say, uh, a chicken. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay. Take the subject to chicken. It follows it is not a human. I accept. Take the subject to chicken. It follows it is not a featherless biped. I accept. We're done. Great job, guys. Like, uh, I, I don't know, I'm not too sure if isolate is the correct word, but uh, the, the blue square has uh, different qualities from different perspectives. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. But it is a shape. Yeah, uh, yeah so... Uh, base form. Yeah, because uh, I, was reading, I was reading one of the books that mentioned that um, the, the one that... The one that... Uh, the one that uh, that uh, that gets our sense our sense uh our sense most would be the one that is the that the, the most prominent feature of that object that that used to specify the quality of that so for instance the blue square the square is the one that quantifies the blue square most so that is why it is a shape in a sense yeah okay and usually we go for the visual route more mm. i mm. think yeah. So, uh, Wong, do you want to be the challenger for the next, uh, take an example and be a challenger? Oh, sure. Uh, okay, I'll try. Uh, okay. So, uh, uh, Can we I'll just... Yeah. Okay. So, uh, I'm so sorry, I'm not good. Uh, I, I won't turn off my, my video because I'm afraid that the internet is not... Stable. That's okay. That's okay. We all understand that. Yeah. Okay, cool. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Okay. Uh, so um, yes, I'll start by saying uh, consider 
the subject uh, an object in the domain of an auditory consciousness which creates an understanding of semantic content. It follows that it is intelligible sound. Uh, who wants to be a defender? <laughs> hey, I would guy? try. I would try. Okay, no, go, go. okay. go ahead, Shubhan. Okay. Uh, so, uh, what was the question? Yeah, the first question. Okay. The, uh, number the, eight. Number eight, okay. Number eight, yeah. Um, yeah, I accept. Okay, because? No, well, no, you didn't ask. Can you repeat what you asked? Because I thought you were asking the was it the difference between a. Oh, so, oh, oh, so sorry. I'm at the wrong. I had the wrong one. Okay, so. Uh, okay, so uh, it follows that you can posit a you can posit the difference between an object in the domain of an auditory consciousness, which creates an understanding of semantic content and intelligible sound. I accept. Okay, posit it. Mm. Well, what is that? Uh... Equivalence. Okay, take the subject, uh, an object in the domain of an auditory consciousness, uh, that which creates an understanding of semantic content and intelligible sound. They are equivalent because. Because uh, they they are uh, they are different and they share the door eight doors of provision. Okay, uh, posit the eight doors of provision. Okay, it's a mouthful actually. Uh, if it is if it is an object in the domain of an auditory consciousness which creates an understanding of semantic content, it follows. Hello, shall we call yeah. people back or did you decide to just kind of let them go to the end this time? Um, I think that's up to Joe. Um, right. If, if but, it makes sense, call them in for a quick Q&A. Oh, okay. um, Joe is stepping out of the circle, I see. Okay, maybe she's having a similar idea. Do you want to tell her to do the new thing? I don't know if she got the message, but that's okay. I think not, but feel free to do it. I'll do it, okay. I'm curious if that is it forward out. or backslash uh, forward slash forward slash, which means the one with the question mark, right? Mm -hmm. Bell. Oops, I did it to Joe. That's not right. Bell well, or ladies Bell? and gentlemen, we're coming to the end of our session. So please, if you would like to ah. slowly make your way inside. Thank you. It, it's um, gone. Sorry. Oh. Yeah, that's cool. Good job. <laughs> nice, nice. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> if it you works. have any, that that's worked. Yeah, the video should disappear in a few seconds too. Um, if you have any any better YouTube video you know, with a audible gong for a couple of seconds. Uh, that was perfect. I can't, though I don't know All any right. better one. I'm sure <laughs> that one is as good as we'll find. Yeah. All right. Thanks.
Um, hi guys, so that was really great. Um, I felt like that was really beneficial and I hope that you guys are, you know, progressing in your understanding and uh, I hope that you are taking your confusions and uh, using your confusion to as, as more exciting things to debate uh, and taking your doubts and using them for further debate. Um, there were some big groups and that's great. Um, if you feel comfortable uh, in a big group and just kind of watching, that's totally okay. Um, however, like if you, if you could sort of try to like try in a smaller group sometimes uh, and try maybe one-on-one -on -one sometimes because, you know, really the only way to get a grip of this is to just try it and to, to sort of, you know, go through the, uh, the motions and go through the, the words and speak the words out loud. Um, but there's also a lot of benefit in watching other people do it as well. So whatever works for you, basically. Um, so uh, Tenzin Namjoon La has a, a, a few words to say about one um, trick that some people are, are falling into that he would like to clarify. So I'm going to ask him to come up on stage. Okay, thank you very much, Joe. Can you see and hear me, everyone? Uh, so remember, um, you know, when we debate, and now we're getting into a little bit uh, further down the road, and we're now being asked to uh, support our assertions, right? So remember, we have the three parts of any reason. We have the subject, the predicate, and the reason, okay? So just as, you know, uh, if we're given a bad reason, we say reason not true or no pervasion. Now, when we give a good reason, it has to, uh, you know, be immune from those two answers. So the reason has to be true, means the subject has to be the reason. And then whatever is the reason necessarily has to be the predicate. OK, that should all be review right now. The, the trick is sometimes people, they'll say a, a, a reason that is actually um, true for everything under the sun. So let me give you an example. Take the subject, the color red. It follows that it's a primary color. I accept. Now, if someone says, okay, uh, because, okay, now you have to give a reason that's going to, you know, establish red as being a primary color. Now, let's say someone says, because there are four primary colors, red, yellow, blue, and white. What do you think? Is that a good reason? Uh, can we see the hands? How many think that is a good reason? Oh, okay. So I, I don't see many hands up. But uh, uh, anyway, someone who's, whose hand is up, come on stage with me. Now the hands go down right away. <laughs> oh, Coralie. Okay, great. So uh, remember, take the subject uh, red. It follows that it's a primary color because there are four primary colors, red, yellow, blue, and white. Okay? So now, yes? Yes. Okay. So now uh, state the pervasion. Oh, yes, said like that. Um, <clears throat> because all the colors in the category of primary colors, red, blue, green, and white, are primary colors. OK, but that's actually not the pervasion. OK, so I'll, 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 I'll now just debate you. Definition. I'll just debate you. OK, so uh, take the subject, the color green. Mm -hmm. It follows that it's the primary color. I accept. Green. Oh, sorry, I was. It follows, the... it, it follows that it's not a primary color because it's a secondary color. Well, actually, here oh, green is one of the primary colors because it's uh for additive color mixing. Yeah. Oh. So maybe. Okay. Sorry. That's, that's yeah. my okay, bad. Sorry, sorry, that's, sorry. I mean, that's that's just an added um, element. Okay. So okay. Sorry. The color so, black um, or something. Hot pink. The color hot, hot pink. pink. Okay. <laughs> yes. Yeah. 
So it follows uh, it take, is a... Take the subject, yeah, the, the subject hot pink. It is not a primary it color. A, it, it follows as a primary color. Why? Because there are four primary colors, red, yellow, blue, and white. Why? Oh, sorry, ah. no pervasion. Ah. No pervasion, state of pervasion. Mm, the colors red, blue, green, and white. It follows uh, that if there are four yes. primary colors, red, yellow, blue, and white. Yes. Then? Then? Uh, yeah, no, I don't see how to phrase that. Then these four colors are primary colors. No. No, then <laughs> it's not necessarily a primary color. Okay, I might have to write this down. Sorry, <clears throat> I haven't followed. Maybe. Yeah, okay, let, 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 let's, let's try it. Can I um, can I make a suggestion just because we're running over time? Um, yeah. Maybe uh, you guys can have a think about this. So the syllogism is take the subject, uh, or is it takes a bit red, it follows it as primary colour because there are four primary colours. So maybe um, we could invite you guys to have a think about that uh, over the break and uh, try and consider the pervasion, which is from, remember the pervasion is from three to two. Um, and uh, we can maybe rejoin yeah. after in the next session or sometime in the next yeah, session. Yeah, we can mention, I also yes. just mentioned too that it is explained in a video that was posted uh, yesterday in the WhatsApp group. And so please watch that as well. And that could help that um, with the Venerable Lo Song Toma explaining it there too. And also don't be ashamed of making these mistakes. This is the point. The point of this is that we are making these mistakes, right? This is, this is where the fun is. This is where the juicy is, yeah? Great. Okay, so um, is that all right with you, Tenzin uh, Namjola? We we can be. Of course, of course. I I just, I just put it in there, uh, in in the, the the group chat. So have a think. Okay, guys, thank you so much, um, and we will see you very shortly uh, for the next lecture.